What is going on guys? I'm Watch Chargo and today we're gonna try to fix the limo. It's been sitting out here for a long time. As you can see, I was in Vegas and everything on the rally and I haven't had time to work on it, but now I'm gonna get back to old trusty here. Uh, let's open the hood. Get in here. You know what, first, first guys, come to the back with me, come to the back real quick. Uh, let me open the trunk with this handy dandy key latch system thing. Don't show them the code. You gotta hide the code, bro. Okay. <laughs> come on in. You're right, there's a switch for the air suspension. Off. Air suspension interrupter. To prevent sudden vehicle movement, turn off air suspension switch prior to jacking, hoisting, or towing vehicle. Anyway, it's off. We'll see uh, how it looks when it's lowered and driving around. I'm excited. It's such a pile of crap here. I think the trunk used to shut better. All right, getting the hood open on this bad boy. Our game plan for today is to change the air filter, clean the mass airflow sensor, and swap out this coil pack, which I think is the culprit. I don't know, but it sure seems like it, because this side of the engine is, I mean, it does drive two of these cylinders, so uh, it's probably that coil pack. Uh, I'm also gonna grab a broom and try to sweep all the trash out of here, just to uh, clean it up and keep water from sitting in there. There is a ground there. It's just kind of a crappy body ground, look at that. Well, that's what I wanted to do was kind of, maybe it's not even, that's a really bad body ground, you know, maybe if we just tighten that one down, we'll get some progress made. All right. So we've got this small broom and it's plastic. So we're just going <laughs> to, what a mess, what a mess, not much else you can do than brush the stuff out. So much water sitting in there from uh, the mud and leaves and everything like that. I think I said I cleaned this out in another video and never came back to it. <laughs> Maybe the cleaning out the limo video. The car is looking real clean. <laughs> it's smallest. You just need some tight shine. Wow. All right, get out of there. Don't show how bad it is. Do you feel better? Yeah, I do feel better. <laughs> Very good. I'm Ricky Bobby and this is Cal Norton Jr. <laughs> or she can never to travel to Tijuana. <laughs> Shake a <it>, bite, baby. <laughs> anyway, that's about as clean as it's gonna get. I'm gonna tighten down this body ground because that could have something to do with our issues here. It is very loose and this whole terminal's corroded. So, I mean, who knows? Maybe that's the whole thing. Yeah, you're right. It's a lot smaller than 9 16 Is it 7 16 And it is. All right, let's tighten down this terminal real quick. Oh yeah. It's so worn out, the, uh, the copper is like displaced from people tightening this ground down. And I don't want to strip it out, but I think we're good. It's got a cheap uh, O'Reilly's battery terminal on there instead of the OEM ones that actually are terrible, but work better than these. Okay, first off, let's change the air filter just because I doubt it's been done in a very long time. So the air filter is super easy. You just pull those two clips, get this thing wiggled loose, move it out of the way a little bit. It's got a fram in it. Oh, that fram. Actually, it doesn't look terrible. It's it's dark. You can see quite a bit of dirt in there, but it's not the worst looking filter I've ever seen. It's not full of junk. I was I was expecting to pull out some trash. Maybe it's a, the micro guard actually looks like the fram now. They're both orange and I don't see any logos on it. Ah, it's a Wix. There we go. So I'd rather have the Wix filter typically, but we're trying to go cheap because the limo is cheap. Slap the new filter in here. Give it a little wiggle and a jiggle, and then we'll get those bottom tabs set in. Okay, since we're in here and the lid is being a huge pain, actually, uh, we're gonna go ahead and pull this uh, worm clamp off real quick and unhook the MAF, unhook the IAT sensor, which is right over here on the side of the airbox. Just squeeze these connectors, give them a pull. They should come right off very easily, and I think that clamp's nice and loose now, so it needs to be a little bit looser. We're gonna pull the whole lid off and just clean the math while we're in here. 
with a little bit of ash cleaner. Actually, I do think we have to pull it out if we want to clean it. There is no easy way into that math. Nope. Well, well, Ford, you pulled one over on us. Let's get that thing slid out. Okay, uh, we gave up on the security torques because I didn't have any sitting around or I couldn't easily find them, obviously. That's how it always works. So I just drilled the security tab out and pull it with the impact. The same thing we do every day. It's not like it matters. There we go. It's actually not like that dirty or anything. So I'm gonna wipe the seal off and we're gonna grab some math cleaner and spray it off. Okay, so we've got our CRC mass airflow cleaner right here. Basically, uh, you don't want this to touch these wires because they're very delicate and if you break them, you will tear something up. But if you can take a look at it, I don't know, we'll get really close. There is dirt caked all over that first hot wire there. I think that's the hot wire. We're just gonna spray it off real quick with a uh, gentle spray and then let it uh, dry off and put it back together. Uh, the security bit you need is a T20 security bit uh, Torx if you actually wanna pull it correctly. This, I don't care so much. Still a lot of dirt on there. This stuff evaporates almost immediately too, which is kind of cool. There's a lot of dirt caked on that wire. Try again. It is a lot better, but it's it still could be better. You can literally see caked dirt on top of the wire. Oh well, it's going back in. That's as good as we're getting it today. Throw this back in the housing, let's change the coil pack. Also, since the housing's off for the uh, air filter, we're gonna change the coil pack as is. That way we have lots of uh, room to work and actually helps out quite a bit. Okay, we're throwing the screws back in the math real quick. Hit them with the impact. On this one, we uh, give it a little bit of help. Grab the Nipex pliers. There we go, nice and tight. Okay, time to change out this coil pack. We're just gonna throw the impact in here. That's a seven, so uh, I'm gonna go get the right socket, then we'll throw this. Yeah. All right, first things first, we've got our impact. <laughs> that's probably not the way to do it, but it's the way to work on this car, that's for sure. Uh, we're gonna pull the connector off, and to do that, it has little tabs that you have to actually pry. Good call. Screwdriver? Huh, who would've thunk? I'm gonna give those a little pry, be very careful because they're probably easy to break. All right, did it carefully, didn't break anything. I'm happy about that. Got the connector off the coil. Let's pull these bolts out. There's one, put them in a pretty safe place, I guess. The other ones are kind of behind the wires, which I haven't just pulled the wires off because they're in a very specific order and they uh, run to different cylinders and everything. I'd rather just put them right on the other coil and uh, I'll have a template using this coil so I don't have to figure out which wire goes where. That's my thinking. I thought so. All right, the coil is free. Man, those are rusted out and old. Let me grab the new one. Got our lifetime warranty Master Pro 25186, which according to X, is the right part. And uh, it does appear to be the right part. X, you haven't let me down yet, man. You're a pretty good O'Reilly's guy. I need you to watch the videos, so what's up? Okay, here go the bolts. Uh, there is uh, this little part that bolts onto the coil as well. It's right there. I'll toss that back in, don't forget it, otherwise it'll end up hanging down and it might also need a ground or something. Cool. We only need three screws. <laughs> and we're down a bolt. We're just gonna get these snug first before I try to tighten anything up. Go ahead and reconnect the coil power connector right there. There we go. All right, I'm gonna start moving the wires over. You have to release these little tabs and then uh, wiggle and pull. 
There's one. Two. Three. And I'll keep the fourth one in my hand so I can transfer it straight over. There's that one. The uh, wire comb is still on this one and kind of makes it easy to do this. So that went pretty smoothly. All right, let's find that bolt. There she blows. Found it. Uh, how to get the bolt out if you drop it. Just bang on the uh, plastic guard underneath the engine bay. Throw the last bolt in here. Give each one of these a click. And I'd say the torque is correct. I'm gonna pack the old coil back up because uh, who knows what's up with the other coil. And I didn't wanna replace both at once because I do think it's this one. So uh, if it's not, we'll have this one to swap over. All that's left, getting the cover back on the air filter and uh, tightening down this worm clamp. 36 degrees outside today, it is actually freezing. We're out here trying to work on this and our hands are definitely losing our movement out here. Okay, we had to take the intake hose off to actually get that on because it's a huge pain to do that. But uh, air filters in, all that's left is these connectors and the intake hose. We'll hook up the math, there's a nice little click, and we'll hook up the uh, IAT, one more nice little click. Okay, all that's left is tightening down this worm clamp, and let's go take this thing for a test drive. I'm excited, we're gonna leave the air suspension off too, see how it looks when it's slammed. Hopefully it fires up. I don't know if it will, because it hasn't been running in quite a long time. Well, Zach, you want to jump in? Zach Subaru is here to save the day. Woohoo! All right, you hit yours, I'll hit mine. Tell me when you're ready for the negative. Good. There we go. Four. Found on road dead. <laughs> it's funny because it's true this time. All right, it's gonna start right up this time. Oh, almost right up. <laughs> it's trying. There it is success the limo is back so much unburnt fuel just sprayed out of the exhaust you can smell it all and it's delicious check air suspension light came on of course uh, because I shut it off and I'm excited about that let's go drive it On throttle like it's supposed to. I think we've got it figured out. Make a pull. It looks crazy because the driver rear is completely out of air. The passenger uh, rear has a little bit of air. The passenger front's completely aired up and the driver front's a little low. Zach, what do you think? How's it running? It needs to be on an autocross track. Autocross sounds perfect, especially with the uh, no ABS and the fact that the brakes just immediately lock up. It'd be perfect. You could slide it all over the place. All right, that is it for today, guys. The limo seems to be running way better. I think we fixed it. If not, it probably needs the other coil pack. Zach's rolling out. And that is it for today. Please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do, and I will talk to you next time. As you guys know, I'm always here to answer the important questions in life, and this is one of them. I'm going to very gently set this on the hood because uh, I don't want to tear it up. But today's important question is, 
It was Nos. Rowdy Punch, good. Haven't had it yet. Yeah, it kind of tastes like fruit punch with like a, a tang. It's, not, it's, it's okay. I think this Nos is way down on caffeine. It only has 160 milligrams. Drink bang, it's got 300 or whatever. Not bad, I could drink it again.